Hey guys, how's it going? Thomas here again. Welcome back to another video. I was cleaning up the other day and I happened upon an inconspicuous looking bag buried at the back of the closet. Let's roll some footage. That's how it actually went down. Whatever, the, the, the point is that what was inside the bag was an oldie but a goodie. I'm a fan of keyboards and I've owned several over the years. I've owned keyboards from companies like DOS Keyboard, Philco, Logitech, and Razer. But the keyboard that got me most interested in these peripherals, and as you might have guessed, the keyboard that was in that bag was the SciTech Eclipse 2. I decided to plug this in and use it exclusively over the past several days, just to see if it was nostalgia putting rose-colored glasses on me, or if this keyboard was actually pretty good. And I must say that I was pleasantly surprised. You might be asking yourself, well, Thomas, it's 2023. Why are you talking about the SciTech Eclipse 2? Well, that's a good question, and I have a few reasons for you. The first being is that, well, I'm, I'm a small YouTube channel and I'm reviewing what I currently own. But the second being is that this keyboard is really the keyboard that got me excited about these peripherals in the first place. And honestly, I just wanted to share that with you today. This video isn't a traditional review in the sense that I'm going to give you a bunch of pros and cons about this keyboard, about why I think you should buy it versus why I don't think you should buy it. Because honestly, this keyboard is old and it's going to be hard to get a hold of these days. No, I wanted to just share with you why this keyboard means so much to me and why I think it still holds up to this day. Now, if you haven't heard of SciTech, they were a brand founded in 1979 and were mainly focused on creating PC peripherals, specifically flight sticks for flight simulators. Then sometime around 1993, they began expanding more into the PC peripheral market, creating other types of peripherals, eventually keyboards. Now, gamers, at least gamers back in the day, preferred playing video games in the dark. And so SciTech, knowing this, designed and developed their keyboards with that thought in mind. So they went out and they built their first keyboard and called it the Gamer's Keyboard. Yes, that was the actual name of the keyboard. It was praised, but it did come with its own flaws. For instance, the backlighting on it was cool. However, because the key etchings weren't transparent, you couldn't actually see the keys in the dark, which kind of defeated the purpose of the backlighting for gamers in the first place. It was large, heavy, and bulky, and took up a lot of space on your desk, so that wasn't really cool. And it also interestingly came with a nine button programmable keypad, which some gamers did enjoy. Next up came the original SciTech Eclipse, which improved on the original gamer's keyboard in a few ways, mainly by improving the backlighting. You see, they improved the key construction to allow the backlighting to shine through the keys so you could actually see the keys in the dark. And they also got rid of that nine button programmable keypad, which by then nobody really cared about. Which takes us to August of 2006, when the SciTech Eclipse 2 first launched and retailed for about 70 US dollars. It gave more color options in blue, red, and a bonus color purple, which was revealed to be just a mixture of the blue and the red, making purple the brightest of the three color choices. So in 2007, 
Mad Cats bought SciTech for $30 million. And in 2016, Logitech bought the brand and SciTech assets from Mad Cats for $13 million in cash. That's why as of today, most SciTech products have been rebranded as Logitech G products. Now the Eclipse 2 is built with rubber dome switches, which honestly, I actually quite like typing on. Some people will say that they find it mushy, almost as if you're typing into a pond of water. But honestly, for me, I find it soft, cushioned, and easy to use for long periods of time. In an era of mechanical keyboards, it's also possible that it's just a nice change to go back to. It has your standard fare 104 key layout and also comes with a media center at the top right. So you get your start, stop, next track, previous track, etc. And for 2006, this was actually pretty cool and I don't remember a whole lot of keyboards doing that back then. The Eclipse 2 has four rubber feet that stick out from all corners of the keyboard, planting it firmly on the desk and also giving it an alien-like look, which I kind of enjoy. It comes with a detachable wrist rest, which feels fine. It's not as soft or plushy as some of the offerings from Razer these days, but it does its job and works just fine. For those of you who like to lift up your keyboard a bit when you type, it does allow you to adjust the height in two small increments. It's USB powered and doesn't require drivers of any kind, so it's immediately available to you when you turn on your PC. In this era, there's something very liberating about being able to do that. It's almost like buying video games without microtransactions. Do you remember those? And what you see is what you get. Obviously, the thing the Eclipse 2 is best known for is its lighting. As previously mentioned, it offers you three different colors in blue, red, and purple. Purple just being a mixture of the blue and the red. You can change the colors of the backlighting by pressing a button, and you can adjust the brightness of the backlighting by turning a small knob. It also has two light bars on each side of the keyboard, so it illuminates the areas beside it as well, which is pretty cool. Overall, the Eclipse 2 definitely looks like a keyboard out of the mid-2000s, and even though it's not wireless, I think it still looks great, and looks good sitting on my desk. The Eclipse 2 to me is the first keyboard that I got really excited about. When I built my PC back in 2008, I remember really wanting this keyboard. I had read reviews of it on CNET and Impulse Gamer and read about it in the Maximum PC magazines. <laughs> remember those? and I really just wanted it to show off to my friends at our LAN parties. Now back in the day, backlit keyboards were more of a novelty. Some found it tacky, and I guess some still do, while others loved it. Gaming branded keyboards were also new, and even though the Logitech G15 did exist back then, I would still consider the Eclipse line of keyboards to be some of the first gaming keyboards that at least I can remember. When I was finally able to get one, it didn't disappoint, and I used this keyboard for years and years. I played a ton of games on this. Counter-Strike 1.6, Doom 3, Far Cry, Warcraft 3, the original Crisis, the list goes on and on. And even when I began to use mechanical keyboards, part of me has always missed the Eclipse 2. Using it again this past week, I feel like this keyboard holds up just as well as it ever did. It's usable for both work and for gaming, and it holds up now just as good as it held up back then. Going back to this keyboard has brought me back to a time when things were just simpler. And honestly, at the end of the day, nostalgia is a pretty powerful thing. 
That's all I have for now, guys. I'm not sure how people will feel about this video, but drop me a comment below and let me know how you felt about it. Also, let me know if this is a keyboard that you've used before, and if not, if it is a keyboard that you would have used back then. Drop me a keyboard emoji in the comments below. I'm interested to see who stuck around until the end of this one. If you like this video, please hit the like button and please consider subscribing. Also, please consider following me on Instagram at 2 Thomas. I'll post a link to my Instagram account in the description below. I've got more tech, desk setup, and gaming content planned soon, so please stay tuned for that. As always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one. See ya.